Salute to all the real ones out there. It's your boy Mike coming at you again with another video. If y'all like the content I've been dropping in the direction that my channel was headed in, I need you to like, comment, subscribe, and share my videos with anybody else you think may benefit from them, alright? Now, today's video topic is going to be called Arbitrary Discourse, alright? And if we talk about the word arbitrary, it means based on random choice or personal whim rather than any reason or system. Discourse is written or spoken communication or debate. So basically what I did here is I just listed some things that came to mind as far as like philosophical maxims or quotes that I really just freestyled but that I see ring true in this current day and age that we're living in. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. So my first one is going to be outward searches only lead to superficial discoveries worthwhile gems always come from within so when i think about this it's like a good example would be validation um, we're in a time where many people are experiencing some form of depression whether they admit it or not because when they're left to their own devices and they're by themselves they're truly not happy and they use external validation as a way to somewhat inflate their egos, but that's only superficial and short-lived. It's fleeting. So take the example of somebody who uploads pictures on social media. Only when they're getting likes on that current picture are they feeling some type of validation. But once, you know, the cap is reached and no one's liking the picture anymore, only until they upload another picture or a video will they start to feel that little endorphin rush that came from the likes, right? Or if you just take confidence, confidence always has to come from within. It can never co come from outside, you know? Um, true self-confidence will always reign supreme, but it's hard to develop because you have to gain confidence through doing, doing something that you get good at so for example if i'm never uh if i've never done a science experiment but then i'm in class and then i have to come up with a project in a week like my confidence isn't really going to be super high about the science because I'm, i've never really done anything with it now i can have personal self-confidence though and that will just basically give me the ability to ask the right questions and not feel ashamed that i don't know something and i'll reach out get help but by and large, confidence is either going to come from yourself or your ability to do something. You know, if I'm a barber, I'm confident that I can cut this dude's hair. But if you give me barber clippers, and I've never even done the work. I've never cut hair or even did my own style before. How am I supposed to be confident that I can cut this person's hair? Like, then th at that point, it's just being foolish. Or opportunities, you know, looking for opportunities outwardly it's not to say you'll never get your aim but i feel like if you look inwardly and really start to target your weaknesses analyze your strengths and you start to just do work on yourself it's almost like the opportunity will come at the right time you know what i mean another one materials can never suffice to substitute for a lack of character so i see this quite a bit too you know you got fake individuals that will drape themselves up in designer clothes, right? And it's like, you, you can have the expensive name brand, whatever all these little uh, G's are on your outfit. Yeah, I know that's Gucci, but Gucci is just clothes. It's just a brand. It doesn't trump your lack of character or the fact that you're just a complete bumbling idiot. You know what I mean? You, you For the most part, people who are real, they're going to see right through your design. You know, so it really doesn't matter what you're wearing or what car you pull up in. Your character is always going to reign supreme. Or if you think about like some of these chicks who go and get plastic surgery and, you know, they be all up on Instagram, this and that, trying to get a large uh, following of people. Yeah, but have you ever seen some of these people? Like they lack character that really makes you respect them. It's like you have a big following, but you're not a person of depth i'm not really going to learn much from you the conversation is dry as hell like your your character is stale 
for you know like the example first like i said with the sports car you got a dude who's just like a complete like all he thinks about is chasing chicks chasing women chasing women chasing women and then he like maybe even goes into debt just to get a fly card so he can appeal to women so it's like you're just totally lost as an individual you know what i mean and those materials that you have will never suffice for your lack of character another one attention is a valuable form of currency invest it wisely so my mentality here is like we're in an age where social media is here to stay right and it can be used for exponential success you know take a person who has a huge following on social media and is promoting like a product or a business or service they will have literally at their disposal income right there just from the simple fact that so much attention is play, paid to their platform or their profile so they, they they'll get a lot more sales just from the simple fact that many people have their eyes on what they're doing or what they're talking about so it is a form of valuable currency but like for the average person with your own attention what are you giving your attention to you know what I mean? Like, my personal opinion is that you should spend it and direct your attention on activities that yield beneficial returns. So, a good example, you already know how I go on my channel. If you focus inwardly and actually start to work on your body or work on your diet or, you know, make, make a goal for yourself that you want to achieve and then start plugging away at it every time you have the opportunity or maybe you have a certification you want to get or you know what have you that's where you should focus your attention also on yourself and uh enlightenment you know even away from like the let's say tangible goals of like more money or things that are career oriented Maybe if it's even health-wise that you focus, you know, hey, I want to get this dental surgery. Hey, I want to go to a chiropractor. Um, I want to go more to the doctor more often and get checked up. Or it could be even on a spiritual tip. You know, I want to curse less. I want to get closer with the most high. Things like this will yield you way better returns for your attention than like aimlessly watching Netflix or something. And then also on the people who matter. So... Like, I don't want to talk too big, but I really just feel ready to be a father now. And when I have a child, I will do everything in my power. I just know it down to my bones that my attention will be heavily focused on my wife and my children. That's one thing that I kind of missed out on when I was a kid. And I really feel like I figured out a way around it. It made me a very strong person, but I definitely want to be there for my kids to just show them through my example and through my discipline and my guidance that i really love them you know what i mean like money and materials are one thing but being there for my kid will always trump that another one pool sources pull from sources of inspiration and in nature experiences travel and great minds to develop your philosophy on how to live your life so this has been a big one for me um, and I hope that y'all can pull away from that as well, because take, for example, great authors, like I said in my uh, previous uploads, they have literally in maybe a hundred pages, hundreds of pages, giving you all of the expertise that they've accumulated over the years. And by you just having the discipline to read through the book, you're going to have a lot of insight into the mind of a genius who was able to impart all this wisdom via a book. Or let's say with travel, I feel like travel is an investment in your soul. Um, how many times have I gone to a place and immediately got an epiphany or a strong vision or some type of deja vu as if my soul had already been there? This is stuff in the spirit realm that I can't really put a finger on. I can't see it with my five senses or, or like I can't sense it with my five senses, but I know on a deeper level that something about going to Turkey or wherever I've been before help me to grow as a person right so my my 
sources of inspiration can come from that or if i'm out in nature that's always a beautiful one because think about how often we are trapped inside of something man-made we're inside of a building we go to work we're inside of another building we get into a car we're inside of a structure that a, a vehicle uh, of a vehicle uh, we pull up we go to the store or another building Oh, we want to go meet up with friends. We meet up, we walk, we go into a restaurant. So you're always inside of something. And most of us have a lack of even like vitamin D. Just the things that you got when you were outside playing as a kid, you lose that as an adult. And a large part of it is because we're never out in nature. I usually get a lot of uh, clarity whenever I'm like at a park, for example, and then I come back home. And then, of course, experiences, you know, think about all the stuff that you've been through, good, bad and the ugly. Usually the bad things are the biggest teachers that drop little gems of wisdom that when you're experiencing the bad thing, it sucks. But then afterwards, when you have that hindsight, you can look back and realize why it needed to happen in that way. All right. Moving forward, the toxic values that flow through and emanate from the fabric of American society has a profound ripple effect around the world. This is something that I truly figured out just from leaving the States back in 2010. Already when I got to Germany, I would see some of what I just mentioned there. But when you come to like like being in Kuwait, Kuwait is a really good example because you have to think it has stark contrast as far as the values even the religion all of the ways that kuwait kuwait culture functions is diametrically opposed to that of america but you see that our influence as americans is widespread and often some of the things that we're not so proud of are emulated around the entire world so what i can say here if I take like Kuwait, you know how like selfie culture and social media like hit and it hit real hard in American culture. Like it's like that now over here. You would think that people just got smartphones like last year. The way that everybody is on their phone, everybody is taking selfies, everybody is just so plugged in. Like I'm, I'm serious, bro. You go into a cafe or anywhere, and it's like. I'm not saying that this isn't the case in America too, but I'm saying like here, it's almost like it's a new trend. So, you know, take it when I go in Germany, for example, fitted caps became like a new trend, even though for us, it was already lightweight played out. You know, um, you just start to see that divorce rates are going up. You start to see that more women are trying to identify with this feminist ideology like so around the whole world some of the toxicity that emanates from america is taking hold in other countries all right technological technological tower of babel now i coined this term from thinking man's templar right because what he was talking about is how there is an agenda that you see in all of the new movies whenever there is a future base plot they usually give you some type of display of a fallout that took place around the whole entire world where most of civilization got civilization got destroyed and then there's only like this this human man-made robotic ai technological technocracy like where, where, where everything is destroyed maybe after nuclear war and then there's only a pocket of people that are left but they're like fused with machines and stuff like that like so that's an agenda that you could see in hollywood right and it's kind of like conditioning you to accept some type of nuclear war what will it be like after that takes place so i figure the only logical defense from like this programming is to unplug from the matrix and connect to the higher 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 self that all of us have i.e the most high so you know that's just how we're living right now it's uh humans are becoming fused with machines and the smartphone has been probably the 
best test run for the elites to know what they can start to do next. And of course, you guys already heard about this metaverse. Think about it, we're all plugged up to our devices for hours on end each day. TVs don't even really get played as much as you, because you have a TV in your pocket. But what's going to happen when they make this metaverse? That's going to be another reason why people are plugged in. We already have video games. So now you're going to have a, another form of a virtual world that people are going to be fully immersed in, right? The only defense against it is to consciously leave your phone behind sometimes and just be outside or make time limits for yourself where you decide, hey, I'm not going to use my device or I'm just going to turn it off from this hour to that hour so I can get focused on whatever plan I have. All right. And last but not least, all worldly things should be inventoried and placed into their proper place within the grand scheme. So I made a list of examples. And the first one would be materials, okay? We're living in a consumerist type culture where everybody's based on or focused on brands and anything that's gonna give them some type of social proof. Like if you're a female and you got a Birkin bag now since Future and Migos and all these other rappers rapped about it, like all the people gonna be looking your way but in our reality let's think about it it's just a bag like when i was working at show park which is a very expensive european boutique that primarily specializes in like watches jewelry necklaces and things like that and they have their own bags and fragrances things of that nature right next to us was louis vuitton and right next to us on the other side was uh hermes all right so luxury boutique stores and what I used to see is like there would be people who would go into the Louis Vuitton store, come out, and it was just more to say that they were there. But then you have other people that were dropping serious bread. And like <laughs> like there would be people who would come out with, with like a bag full of purses and products from Louis Vuitton. So you got to think that person easily probably spent like 20 racks just right there. Now I get it. If you got it, and 20 racks to you ain't a big deal then do what you do but i know for the most part a lot of us be chasing after these brands because they we feel like it's going to give us some type of social status but really it's just like in the event of a louis vuitton bag or a gucci belt it's like just be sure in your mind to put it in its proper place bro it's, it's just a belt and it's practical function is the hold of your pants not to say you can't look fresh and if you have the money by all means, get whatever the hell you want. But remember, it's just material. And when, when it, a, a house goes on fire, anything that you can lose in a fire really isn't that important in the grand scheme. Idols, you know what I mean? People worshiping celebrities and things of this nature. I could never under really understand that. I've never even been like that. Like I said, when I was coming up, my favorite rapper was always Nas. And yeah, I can't act like I'm immune. In some ways, I did kind of emulate myself. I always like having a fresh fade, this, that, and the third. And I would like to say that Nas was at least somewhat of a more decent example than somebody like Takashi Six Nine or some bullshit. But you guys get my drift. Money. We all need money. I know I'm hell bent on making sure I have enough of it, but it's mainly so I have freedom. It's not just so I can have money so I can flash and show my wealth because that's honestly the direct opposite of what wealthy people do status i get it status with it you can actually move mountains because you have the influence of a lot of people underneath your beckoning call but like just just remember where it is in the grand scheme if you over here hell bent on getting status 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 but you never even take a minute to do inventory on who the fuck you are or what you're about or what principles do you stand on or what's your relationship with the creator if you don't never do that i feel like you're already just lost because you're identifying with people who are on the same plane as you and you're abandoning your higher self and the most high in the process appearances <laughs> Yo, that's probably the most important one out of the list that I could say right now because it's become a big trend for, I mean, men are doing the same thing, but I, I say women, it's really just out of control. Another thing, if I bring it back to Kuwait, how often have I just pulled up in a vehicle, look left and right, and just seen lips protruding from the glass where I'm just thinking, 
inside of this vehicle on my right or left are females that literally not only got surgery on their lips but they got it to the point where it looks ridiculous you look like a fucking clown with your lips so inflated past where anybody can look and know that those are not your natural lips and i'm gonna tell y'all females another thing when y'all get y'all lips infl inflated like this one thing flashes in the dude's mind almost automatic and it's gonna be that you're a fan of oral sex you like giving oral sex that's that's the main thing that flashes in our head because who will go out of their way to inflate their lips to such monumental proportions where it's not even close to the realistic version of yourself just know that females all right sex let's not forget sex is somewhat of a banal fleeting activity you know what i mean at best you're gonna last 45 minutes to an hour and then after that you're right back to where you started it, like it's over now so to be over here just hell bent about sex and thinking about it every five minutes what is that really gaining you and if you're a man specifically i want you to understand how the elites would think i would like it if most of my men are always thinking about sex and nothing more that gives me more control over the world right because nobody's gonna uh, cause a revolt because they're too busy you know I me mean, being stuck with a carnal nature and last but not least, man, you got the opinions of others, which the beauty of being be, getting older is that you tend to like have less of a care regarding what people think or how they feel about you. You know what I mean? The only person that really matters is your own opinion as well as your higher self, man, or the most high, because you, you kind of know in, inherently what you're supposed to be doing. You know what's right or wrong. Right, so let's let's cut the bullshit. You know what you're supposed to be doing in this life. All it takes is a little bit of self-reflection. So, who cares what everybody else thinks, man? Trust me, they don't they don't care about you like that. It's only a handful of people that really truly think about your well-being on this earth. And you're lucky if it's your parents, a handful of people in your family, and whatever partner you're with. That's pretty much it. Even friends. It's not to say that they prey on your downfall, but they definitely don't want you to do much better than them. Because at that point, now you have a, a person who just knows you. They're not a friend. They're actually jealous or, you know what I mean, plotting and scheming. Or they're holding on to a version of you that no longer exists. Just so they feel like they have an advantage over you. So, you really got to stop caring about what people think, man. Alright, so... That's all I had to talk about when it comes down to arbitrary discourse. You know, um, please please drop some comments below if you if you have anything you want to add. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll holler at you on the next one.